Hi folks, I'm Rod, and I'm new to drones. Well, not entirely new. I had been wanting to build one for years, uh, primarily for aerial photography. I started out on the internet forums, in Reddit, um, pricing out parts from Hobby King, debating in my head whether I wanted a quadcopter or actually probably a hexa or octocopter. Uh, or whether I wanted a larger fixed wing glider, uh, what would suit my needs better, and uh, what kind of camera payload I could rig up with it. And I started building a foam glider for practice, just, you know, just to practice my fixed wing skills, see wh where that went. And then uh, DJI came along with some pretty impressive gear at ever lowering prices. And so I thought I'd just wait a while and see what the market brought. I'm a man of many hobbies, so my uh, time and money for the aerial RC hobby kind of disappeared for a while. And then earlier this year, I realized that I could actually pick up a pretty cheap toy drone from China that actually has a 1080p camera and I could get practicing the uh, multi-rotor skills on that and see where that takes me. Actually the whole package cost less than a flight controller or control sticks for a hobby grade uh, drone. So picked it up and started looking into what uh, what DJI has on the market now and what I could get as used equipment and decided that I'm probably going to invest in a uh, something in the Phantom line. So I started looking then at the rules. Obviously I needed to follow the rules and the Transport Canada site at the time, and this was uh, mid-February, um, was divided into current rules and new upcoming rules that would take place uh, June 1st. So I started looking at the new rules page and saw that they had finally implemented licensing and a license, license exam was only $10 and registration was also part of the new scheme matching what the FF, bleh, matching what the FAA in the US has at least for their commercial pilots um, and again registration was only five dollars so not a big deal and that, but I saw that there was no study guide yet in fact the rules update that was available was still just an addendum to the existing law so it didn't really have the whole laws all in one place it was like okay replace this line with this line and then add this section kind of deal but the website said that that contained most of what you needed to pass the exam so i read over it pretty quickly and then i thought what the heck it's only ten dollars maybe the best way to learn this figure out what it is that I don't really know that I should be studying is to try the exam once there's no penalty for trying it and not not passing um, the kind of I think expect that people will need to try multiple times um, because what they do at the end is they tell you what sections you need to review and that gives you a a direction to go in for studying again to try it a second time um, so i thought that's what i'd do and so i tried the basic exam and on the first try i passed with 80 percent you only needed 65 so that's all right but since then, though, I've come across a lot of negative posts on the internet and YouTube videos complaining about how hard the exam is 
and that there's a lot of questions about things that drone pilots don't need to know about. I want to say I kind of disagree. Um, everything that I saw, and I know I didn't see all the questions, there's a much larger pool of questions than what any one individual will get, but uh, what I saw, I can relate it to what you would need to know to fly some sort of a remote piloted system. Um, there were aerodynamics questions, for example, that I think some people think aren't really just aren't applicable to uh, drone flying because they're thinking multi-rotor, but the same license applies to fixed wing. Fixed wing, if you don't know your aerodynamics, you're on the ground. Um, even multi-rotor, same, uh, same principles apply. Uh, I did feel that there were questions on the basic exam that maybe were more relevant to the advanced exam, uh, particularly doing the uh, questions about uh, radio telephony. Uh, what do you do when you hear a certain type of message from air traffic control? Um, seemed a little bit out of place because a basic flyer has no business being within 5.6 kilometers of an airport. Um, so they're probably not going to be hearing messages from air traffic control. Um, they really don't have any reason under the basic set of rules to ever have to uh, make a transmission to air traffic control. Um, it's probably just meant for the advanced people. Hopefully by June that that'll be moved into the advanced pool strictly because um, I don't know. I, I, I don't see a situation where a, a basic pilot is going to need to make radio communication with air traffic control and they're not running under an RFOC which would specify needing um, an ROCA radio license, in which case the ROCA exam is the place to uh, ask these kinds of questions. Um, I know that it's in there. <laughs> That's what the point of the ROCA is. Um, giving Advanced flyers, though, that are permitted to fly in controlled airspace, the awareness that, yes, they may need to also go for an ROCA exam. So throwing a couple of questions in there about radio communications might not be a bad idea, but I really don't see how it fits in with the basic. But overall, uh, the questions were focused on what I thought they should should be focused on, um, federal laws regarding RPAS. Um, anyone claiming otherwise, I think, is just trying to stir up some controversy for a little bit of attention. Um, Ten dollars, I think, is a reasonable price for administering a test. I've never seen a test cheaper than that. I mean. Maybe the uh, one weekend a month when the boating exam is free, if you go to Canadian Tire and do it there. Uh, but otherwise, it, it's $60. Uh, so yeah, I don't think $10 for administering the test is going to hurt anybody. Uh, if you spent hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands on a UAV, $10 to test for a pilot certificate is nothing. $5 to register it, again, nothing. That said, I'm probably going to talk a little bit more about drones on this channel in the future. Um, if you're interested in that, hit the little subscribe button, where is it, over there. Um, and uh, that'll keep you up to date with what I'm posting and hopefully uh, I'll see you down in the chat.
in the comments below. Talk to you later.